Hello and welcome to episode 8 of This Week in Linux. Today is Monday, January 25th, 2010. Tonight's episode is going to be a completely Ubuntu-specific episode because there have been so many Ubuntu stories in the last few weeks, I just had to cram them all into one episode, get them all out of the way, so we can move on to other things. For the first story, this past Saturday, January 23rd, 2010, the Ubuntu User Days team held the very first Ubuntu User Day. This was mainly done in the Ubuntu Classroom channel on irc.freenode.net. Now, there were 14 different sessions covered there, including new users to Ubuntu, making the switch, equivalent programs, all sorts of things like that that are perfect for new to entry level in, entry level to intermediate users. The other great thing about this Ubuntu User Day is that it gave the Ubuntu developers the chance to demo Jono Bacon's new program, Learned, which is the all-in-one interface for connecting to IRC to the, the Ubuntu Classroom for browsing the PowerPoints or the, excuse me, the Impress presentations that that the presenter might be giving. You can see the schedule of events that are coming and what's happened already. You can look at a browser if they direct you to one. There's a ton of stuff in this interface. I'll, I'll put some, some screenshots up from the app itself so you can take a look at it and a link to it on the website thisweekinlinux.com. Today also marks a big week in the Ubuntu developer community in that the Ubuntu Developer Week starts today, January 25th, and ends Friday the 29th. There are a bunch of sessions being held this week in the Ubuntu Classroom channel on Freenode such as Django, uh, getting started with Ubuntu packaging, getting started with uh, Amazon's EC2 service, adding Ubuntu 1 to your, to your existing applications or your new applications, a lot of uh, show, showing the lower level user how to interact with the developers or how to become a developer if they want to do so. This event is also using the Learned software if you're so inclined that you can pick up from the PPA. I'll put a link in the sidebar as usual. Late last week, Ars Technica reported on some new developments in the latest alpha release of Ubuntu 10.04, the long-term support version coming out in April of this year. The hardware abstraction layer for Ubuntu is supposed to be entirely removed with this version. I think this is a bit of a controversial move, but They've got to do it at some point. It's deprecated, so why not start with a long-term support version? They've started to deprecate it with the 9.10 version. If you don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to, to, to move on ahead to the next story. However, with this version, they're, also, they're supposed to be removing the GIMP, but in Alpha 2, they haven't done it yet. They are adding uh, PyTV, PTV, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. It's supposed to be a very decent video editor, but uh, I've heard that it's very entry-level, which I guess is great for the... Ubuntu community, the desktop users, the, the beginner users. They're also planning to include Gwibber in the 10.04 installation, but it sounds like it's not ready yet, so they haven't included it in Alpha 2. I'm sure you can add it from the PPA. It's probably broken because even in 9.10 and 9.04, there were some problems with the 2.0 version. It locks up, it crashes, it it's, it's just completely not ready yet, but it is a whole new interface different from the 1.2 version before it, so please do check it out when it becomes available because it's got a really neat new interface. The Nautilus file manager also received a bit of an overhaul with this Alpha 2 release in that it now has dual pane views and the tabs have been moved to the bottom. I think the final thing for Ubuntu 10.04 is they say that they're going to have a 15 second or 10 second boot up time. They've been claiming this for two or three releases now and I've yet to see it. I've had it on my laptop and my desktop over the last few months and it is a whole lot faster than it used to be but I'm not seeing anything under 30 seconds from when the BIOS is finished posting until you're at the desktop. I've, I've seen on a really fast system 20 seconds, but even that, that's not the 10 or 15 that they're claiming. And don't hold me to that, but I, I hope to see that in the next release. You know, a long-term support release, you're going to have a lot of new things, you're going to have a lot of great features, and it it's supposed to be one of the sturdiest, the longest-lasting versions that you'll see. There's been some speculation going around that with this new version of Ubuntu coming out, there's going to be a music store introduced, much like iTunes or uh, Amazon's music service or any of those other ones, but it's supposed to be integrated into your Ubuntu One client that comes with the new versions. Much has not been released on it yet, but there is a page on the Ubuntu wiki for it. It's really sparse, and it's just got some drawings, so it's not. it doesn't look like it will be 100% ready, but if they partnered with an existing MP3 store, it, it should be pretty quick to get into place, and it would make Ubuntu a much more viable platform for a lot of the audio files that have been avoiding, uh, avoiding Ubuntu and avoiding Linux for the, the lack of audio cap uh, quality and capabilities. From what the wiki page says, it looks like it's going to be embedded in either Rhythmbox or Banshee, so if you love those players already, this is one more reason to keep loving them. If you're an iPhone user who uses Linux like I am, one of the biggest qualms that I've had is not being able to sync my music collection from Ubuntu or from Linux in general 
to my iPhone? Well, webupdate.org has released a series of instructions to connect your computer to the iPhone by installing just a couple of packages from a PPA and a couple that are already in the repositories for Ubuntu. I'll put a link to how to do that in the sidebar. I'm not going to actually uh, post the instructions myself, but I will link to the story on webupdate.org. And this is not the way that's been previously mentioned using libgpod4. This is actually accessing the GVFS, the file system, and doing a direct sync with that. All right, and for the final Ubuntu-related story, I've been a fan of Dell computers for a very long time. When they finally came out and said, we're going to start releasing Ubuntu computers, Ubuntu desktops and laptops, I was ecstatic. You know, I'm not 100% Ubuntu, but the fact that they're embracing the open source community is wonderful to me. Well, it looks like they're taking more and more steps to sort of push Ubuntu to the background. People complained about it before, and they brought the laptops up to the front. Well, if you look at the Dell page now, there are no desktops with Ubuntu available. There are laptops and netbooks only. Something really needs to be said about this. I don't know if there's a petition yet or not. There probably is somewhere. I'll put a link to the story from lxer.com. Go ahead and check that out. Well, that's all for this Ubuntu-heavy episode of This Week in Linux. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.